Mr. Speaker, it was, <laughs> quite honestly, it wasn't my intention to have contributed to this discourse, given the fact, Mr. Speaker, that, take your ball and run, that this is a situation of normalcy. You see, Mr. Speaker, what the former administration used to do was to combine the borrowing for budgetary support in the very proceedings of the appropriation bill. Right now, it is done separately, so we deal with the budgetary support and before we come to the appropriation bill. Now, Mr. Speaker, you sit here, you listen, and I must tell you, Mr. Speaker, that I support the motion. You sit here and you listen to the former Prime Minister, and you'd want to tell yourself that he ought to know better, Mr. Speaker. Because as long as your recurrent revenue is not excessive to facilitate the implementation of capital projects, you must borrow to do your capital projects. And essentially, this is what is going on and now. It just precedes the appropriation bill. But I'm listening, Mr. Speaker, to the member for Miku South. And he has the audacity to speak about giving land away. He has the audacity to speak about spending wisely. And I have no difficulty with that. Because this is good economic advice. Get towards the benefit of the country. But then if you give advice and you sway, or your actions are diametrically opposed to your own advice, Mr. Speaker, I don't know what exactly you're saying or doing. And I want to talk about the land and the proper spending. Because, Mr. Speaker, the government had an asset on which it had spent over $52 million on. The Dahem all I speak of no other. The government had spent $52 million on the Dahem all. When this member from Miku South as Prime Minister sold it, we had spent 52, it was valued at 60. He sold it for 13 and a half million dollars. Less than a quarter of the value. Let me say it again. The Dahe Mall, and he speak, Mr. Speaker, I refer to the mall because the law says whatever permanent structure is on the land is deemed to be part of the land. So when you speak of land, you speak of the, the land itself and the permanent structure. So it qualifies as land. The Dahe Mall was valued at $60 million. He literally gave it away. Government had spent over $52 million on it. So we had some kind of equity in terms of value versus what we had actually spent. He gave it away for less than a quarter, for $13.5 million. Today has the audacity to talk about spending money wisely. And what is worse, Mr. Speaker, having given it away, he imposed a, a, a liability of longevity on the people of this country. He turned back and rented for over a million dollars a month, a month for 16 and a half years, totaling almost $200 million. That's right. You took the asset. It was valued 60 million. You sold it for 13 and a half. And on top of that, you caused us to be contractually obligated to rent the same building for 16 and a half years at over a million dollars a month, totaling over 200 million dollars. And you have the audacity to talk about why spending? We have the cardboard lands, Mr. Speaker. And I see we're in the preparatory stages of buying the land, buying the land for the people of this country. What did you do? You flew you, some of your surrogates to Canada, prevented NIC from buying the land. 
and advise NIC to lend the people the pensioners' money. Cabot land at the time was valued at $90 million. Cabot got it at one third of the price of $30 million. And having sold one or two lots, I could tell you, they paid off NIC. You know? And you have the audacity. Not only did you prevent a St. Lucian from owning a slice of St. Lucia, not only did you do that, you use our pensioners' money. People who have contributed to the development of this country use their sweat to enrich a foreigner. Yes, sir. You know, you have the audacity to speak about spending money wisely. DSH giving away land. DSH, Mr. Speaker, 1,000 acres. And I'm so sorry that a man who's redound or who is an expert in so far as banking is concerned could have fixed his signature to such an egregious deed, something that is against the interest of the people of this country. I speak of the member for Swazel. He has asked me to give him a break. So I'll pacify it. <laughs> But Mr. Speaker, you have the audacity to talk about giving away land. A thousand acres at a dollar an acre for 99 years. Jesus. You know? Then the man say, bring in race. You don't know the man talking about spending money. The man took everybody, all ministers had, were chauffeur driven. Horses, horses, walking on red carpet, using taxpayers' money for horse race. Today, you speak about spending money wisely. Mr. Speaker, when the last government won the elections on June 6, 2016, every minister had a room where? In that hotel in Viewfort, Coconut Bay, you know, Coconut Bay. The member for Suzel Saltibus. Mr. Speaker, I rise on a point of order. The member has been misleading the House on the past four points that he has made there. But what really got me annoyed, you know, because sometimes you let people hang themselves, Mr. Speaker. But when he comes now to speak about everybody had a room at Coconut Bay, Mr. Speaker, this is grossly false, and the member needs to take this statement back. Mr. Speaker, I can speak from a standpoint of certainty. If the member did not capitalize on the then Prime Minister's generosity, that is his business. But I can tell you, without fear of contradiction, a room was made available for every minister in his cabinet. And I stand by this, because I'm sure the member for Castries North never capitalized on it. But he had a room there as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, you know, when they talk about misleading the house, and those are the very people that talk about spending money wisely. Those are the very people that talk about spending money wisely. Mr. Speaker, there was a minister in his cabinet, in his cabinet, that got land at 69 cents a square foot. The cabinet conclusion is there for all and sundry to see. And then you talk about giving away land. There was a chairman of NHC who got land in Marigo at less than two dollars a square foot. And then you talk about giving away property. I mean, Mr. Speaker, those things, honestly, <laughs> under your watch, you know. And then, Mr. Speaker. Spend money efficiently. You are prime minister, a country that went through, it's nobody's fault that COVID hit us. And we did not stand in isolation from the ramifications of COVID. But with resilience, we had to face COVID. But in, in that kind of environment, you go and rent a hotel room for $8,000 a night, 2,000 pounds a night. And then you talk about spending money wisely. 
Mr. Speaker, it is only now the leader of the opposition does not leave his vehicle on from morning till night. <laughs> only now, because he doesn't have access to state funds. I can tell you without self contradiction, Mr. Speaker, that any time the last Prime Minister left his house at 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning, the first thing is you would know because Siren, meow, 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 every day. And then you can follow that vehicle, Mr. Speaker. And I would bet my life that as long as he's not back home, wherever that vehicle is, it's idling. With the AC on. And you talk about spending people's money wisely, Mr. Speaker. Hmm? You spend $112 million on horses. They came by air-conditioned plane, Lord have mercy, on taxpayers' backs. And then had to sell the horses to Barbados. Point. You know? You know? And you talk about spending money wisely, Mr. Speaker. You gave your brother-in-law $7.3 million to go and seek your vaccine, sir. Up to now, we have been refunded partially. We have not received all the monies. And then came and lied to solutions talking about it was a collaborative effort with Barbados. Belgians say, eh, eh, we never pay any money. <laughs> you know? And then you are talking about spending money wisely, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I, $11 million for a bypass road for T.O.R. King. $12 million to buy alternative land for the farmers. $15 million. Yeah, he was Minister of Infrastructure. I stand corrected. Mr. Speaker, what I'm saying is this. We are confronted with a motion to give us the relevant budgetary support so that when we come on the 26th, it's smooth sailing. So really and truly, we are in the preparatory stages of our budget presentation. Huh? Yeah, 2,000 pounds a night. And you know, on top of that hotel room, Mr. Mr. Speaker, I saw certain names. Laundry. Even laundry, the people charge the taxpayers to do, you know. And not here alone, and the entourage. <laughs> laundry. Your partners are members of their own heart. I'm safely share paypally. And then you come and talk about, I mean, it's just that kind of irresponsible statement, Mr. Speaker. Then they talk about the levy. You know? A character like that, I don't know what he does in this August chamber, you know. You'll embarrass this government, saying this two and a half percent is said this is said that. It's not for health and security levy, but you go to Trinidad and you're telling them impose a levy for security. Call Teba, guys, sir. Call Teba. The man is here. The man was blowing hot flames because the government found it fitting to generate revenue, particularly to address our acute crime situation and to take care of our people. Yeah. He made a lot of noise, but he goes to Trinidad on taxpayers' money. He went there on taxpayers' money, but took a political platform, almost attempting to fake a cry. And oh, you know, she's so visionary. Almost attempting to fake a cry, advising the leader of the opposition to impose a tax for security. Which is the same thing we are in an advanced stage and he has lambasted us to that. So Mr. Speaker, I say all of this so that the people of this country and those in the diaspora following the proceedings will know that when this man speaks on the left side of his mouth, they must watch the right side. And you know there was this old saying, that in, one, in, in a certain brain, on the right side, there is nothing left. And on the left side, there is nothing right. So, Mr. Speaker, I support the motion wholeheartedly. I thank you.